So, I've played Wuthering Waves CBT2 for hundreds of hours already, pretty much experienced everything the game has to offer, and here I am, talking with you guys about my very recurrent situations of the game. Is the game ready to release yet? Is it a Genshin killer? Honestly, I don't care about that. The main topic is, what is the issue that we have in CBT2 after playing for like a month already? As usual, just like my other review videos, I will cover different types of topics, not just about the combat since we know it's their main specialty, right? In here, I will also talk about the story, music, difficulty, and the biggest issues that I think they need to solve before they actually release the game. Before we start, I want to warn you guys that this is supposed to be a feedback video. Obviously, I will point out the things that they need to improve rather than a good thing. I won't sugarcoat anything here, so don't blame me if you only find like the bad things in between waves here after you watch this video. I will brutally honest here because again, this is not a compliment video. I want them to genuinely improve the game before they release the game. So let's not yapping much longer here, I will not waste any time, let's just start with the story first. If you guys are new here, you probably haven't watched my first beta review video. Yes, I also played the first beta, and to summarize, the story in CBT1 wasn't really well received, and because of that, they need to change almost the entirety of the story. So the big question now is, is there any improvement for the story in CBT2? Yes, they did improve the story, I guess. There are some aspects that I didn't like in the story yet, but overall, they managed to grab my attention for the second beta, and this time I actually read through the whole story without hitting the skip button. However, just as I have mentioned before, there are some parts of the story that still needs to be improved, First of all, the most obvious one for the story is how they changed the introduction for Kramer's boss fight. I know that this is a pretty much a subjective opinion I guess, but I'm pretty confident that majority of people prefer the first beta Kramer's. You can go to Reddit, you can go to the official Discord channel, they made a specific thread for people to give their feedback about CBT2 there, and a lot of people actually agree that second beta Kramer's is just very very underwhelming. Kronos is supposed to be a very strong enemy, he is a living legend that massacred a lot of resonators in the past, this is according to his lore, and they portrayed that perfectly in CBT1 to be honest, showing how terrifying he is with just a fraction of his power, he completely wiped Yang Yang's party very easily. However, in CBT2, they removed that cutscene entirely, and we proceed directly into the fight, killing him without any effort since they also reduced the difficulty for this fight, and honestly, it gives me a lot of bummer. Please Kuro, I'm begging you just bring back the first beta crownless because second beta crownless doesn't leave that much impression for me. That is my first issue with the story. My second issue is how everything went really really slow for the plot of the story because the lack of action element. After fighting against Kronos, you spend like an hour or two hours I guess, standing in the same area, right clicking dialogues, rather than moving around the map fighting enemies as we progress through the story, which is supposed to be the right thing to do instead, right? I mean, this is an open world game, people want to move around, explore the map. What is the point of being an open world game if you're just gonna stand in the same room for the whole story? 
I guess I will let this slide just because it gets interesting later on. However, I still think that this will ruin the first impression of the game, which is a really really important part to hook people in because from this alone, you can already imagine some people might quit the game early on due to the fact that the story is kinda boring early. We really want to avoid that, so I hope they put some change just a little bit on the prologues, no need to do 90% of story over whole game, because I think the rest of the story is already fine as it is. Of course, it's not the best story ever exists in a video game, but as the very first chapter of the game, I think it is already fine, and they can just improve the story as we go on into the next chapter. Next, moving on, let's talk about the difficulty of the game. There's been a lot of narrative saying that Oh, this game is gonna be the Dark Souls of gacha games, get ready to get skill issue or whatever it is. But honestly, I think that is a bit exaggerating. Open world enemies are still easy, I guarantee you, you most likely will never die to them. Unless you are using like level 1 character or something. And by open world enemies, this is also including the open world bosses, so don't worry about that. If you are a casual, you just want to explore the map, feel free to do that. But that doesn't mean that the game doesn't have any changing content. Which is I'm pretty sure some of you guys already know it is the hologram bosses. They are basically the crack version of open world bosses and they even have new movesets that you won't ever find in the open world version. So if you are a hardcore player, definitely look forward to that bosses and if that is not enough, we'll also have a rock like game mode, same thing as simulated universe if you are coming from Hoyo first game, which is Honkai Star Rail. And we also have Tower of Adversity which is Wuthering Waves equivalent of Spiral Abyss. However, in my personal opinion, those two game modes are not that hard compared to hologram bosses, but at the very least, that still requires you to put some effort for you to be able to clear, because each of these game modes have specific gimmicks that you need to follow so you cannot just go unga bunga through the whole content. For example, in the roguelike game mode, you can only use one specific character, that means if you got hit too many times, you cannot heal, unless you got lucky right, maybe you got healing buff or something, then you can heal. But if you are in low HP and you cannot heal, it is going to be harder for you to clear because obviously you have no HP left, the enemies might just kill you very easily. And as for Tower of Adversity, it requires you to build multiple characters because you can only use certain characters for a specific amount of time. If you are coming from PGR, this is basically the same as Phantom Paintage. So for this game mode, it requires your knowledge about team building. And again, you cannot just solo everything with only just one character because there is a limit of usage for each character and some bosses actually have damage resistance, like Morning Axe for example. It has spectral resistance, so I cannot use Roofer here to defeat it because Roofer is a spectral character. With all of that explanation, I think the difficulty for this game is fine for both casual and hardcore players. You do not need hard bosses for open world because again you are supposed to farm these bosses like hundreds or even thousands of them in a month to ascend your characters and also to get their echoes so I don't think you want to mod for 5 to 10 minutes just to kill a single one of them every day because they are basically the same as hypostasis bosses from Genshin Impact which is supposed to be just a farming content material. So yeah it doesn't need to be extremely hard to clear so I personally think it's fine for the open world bosses to be easy. Next on the list we have the music. I know that this is a subjective topic, but I believe we can still get a general consensus for this topic, which is the lack of iconic music. This is not just for the open world, but for me, it feels like some of the bosses as well. I know that some of them have a good soundtrack, like Calmless for example, it has a good soundtrack, and then Inferno Rider, also very good, but other than that, it's really hard for me to say, because for example, if I ask you guys what kind of music that we have for the monkey boss, Valiant Bringer for example, I don't think anyone could remember because even I cannot even remember how it sounds like sounds like. And this is even worse for open world music. If I'm going to ask you guys the same question again, do you still remember the music from Central Plains for example? I don't think anyone could remember the music from Central Plains because it is the exact same music as any other area for the whole map. I really don't want to compare this to Kenshin Impact but if I'm asking you guys if you still remember the music from the UA for example, literally one of the oldest region in the Genshin, I bet even those who didn't play the game anymore can still remember how the music sounds like. Well, let's not put Genshin Impact as a comparison here, we will just use PGR, their previous title. I guarantee you none of PGR players would ever forget Rosetta Boss Fight music. And it's literally coming from the very first event patch in PGR.
and honestly i don't think i need to provide more example for pgr you can just look by yourself every single boss in pgr has its own music and every single one of them is very very good that aside let's move on to the juicy part let's talk about my biggest concern that i have with cbt2 there are several things that i want to point out first of all number one on the list we have the ecosystem obviously some of you guys probably already know about this already the second one is related with the overall polish of the game and my biggest concern in my opinion it is related with localization so for those who didn't know what is an echo echo is basically the artifact system of watering waves how do you grind them you basically go around the map killing the monsters and then they will drop themselves as a hologram which we call an echo here and then you can collect them after that you equip them and you can also use them in combat basically like pokemon so what is the issue with this system the good thing is you can grind unlimitedly because you don't need to use stamina like in genshin the bad thing is you also need to grind unlimitedly there are a lot of layers of rng that you need to deal with in order to get your best echoes and by i mean a lot it means a lot first layer of rng we need to make sure that the enemies drops their echoes to begin with and even with maximum level of terminal we only get like 20 percent probability of dropping what is terminal so when an echo drops it has a rarity like green blue and gold for example and with higher level of terminal you will get higher rarity of echoes and also higher probability of dropping echoes so even with maximum level of terminal it only gives you 20% dropping probability and if it's not dropping then GG moving on to the next enemies other than that we have the second layer which is the main stat RNG obviously there are a wide variety of main stats that you can get and you only need specific main stats for specific character and then another layer which is the third layer it's about subsets RNG not to mention that the percentage of these subsets are extremely wide you can get like 5% crit damage up to 20% crit damage in a single subset which is really really crazy and we are not even done yet because we have the fourth layer which is about the set effects it is kind of similar with genjin where one domain usually provides you like two different kinds of set effects right but in withering waves some of them belongs to three different kinds of set effects which is objectively already worse than genjin but hey at least you can grind them unlimitedly right well yes i guess but also no people seems to forget that some of these enemies have a thing called respawn timer so a brief explanation about the echo each echo has three different costs which is four three and one what is the difference the difference is within the main stats that they could provide it for example like an echo with the cost of four it can provide you stats like crit rate and crit damage an echo with the cost of 3 can provide you elemental damage bonuses and the echo with the cost of 1 usually provides you a common stats like attack percentage or HP percentage for example. One character can use a total of 12 costs so the best formation for echo in CBT2 is for 3311 it consists of 1 crit rate or crit damage echo, 2 elemental damage bonuses and the rest are attack percentage if you are using a DPS character. What is the problem with this? The problem is within how you get each echo. You get an echo with the cost of 1 usually from common types of enemies and then you get an echo with the cost of 4 from open world bosses like Kranos and Inferno Rider for example. But the problem lies within an echo with the cost of 3 which you can only get from elite types of enemies. These elite types of enemies are only spawned like once a day and there are only few numbers of them across the map and remember that you only have 20% of drop rates right so imagine you're killing one of them and they didn't drop then yeah congratulations you just break your account and even if they drop again you have to deal with all of the other layers that i've already mentioned before so you can already imagine how hard it is just to get your base echoes sure you can go to your friend's world to hunt another echoes but imagine doing this on daily basis i don't think anyone could deal with it without getting burned out really fast Another way to farm echoes is by using tassel field, but this is just as I predicted, it is a useless thing. Not only because it can only drop specific type of echoes, but also because you need to spend your stamina. I mean, why would you want to farm there and spend your stamina if you can get echoes for free in open worlds anyway? This is also related with how you need to spend your stamina wisely, because character progression is really really slow. You need a huge amount of materials just to build a single character, 
and obviously to farm these materials you need a huge amount of stamina so yeah you definitely don't want to use stamina to farm these echoes and that is my problem with the echoes next we have the overall polish of the game and i'm not specifically talking about bugs for the bosses but also movement like wall running jumping and animation transition for each menus transition between menus is kinda stiff it's like watching a powerpoint slide presentation some of them doesn't even have transition so it's kinda weird to see in my opinion and speaking of menus i also don't think that the menus are really good and unique but the good thing i guess it is relatively simple and i don't think anyone would get confused by the menus because every button is pretty much self-explanatory like gacha is gacha character is character team is where you arrange your team obviously you get my point i guess i can let this slide because pgr used to be like that in the past and they can always gradually change the ui just like they did in pgr but again I always think that having a strong start at the release is always better than fixing it for later so I really hope they improve the UI a little bit because right now it is kinda boring. Last but not least we have the localization issue again. Same thing as CBT1, almost all of the dialogues doesn't make any sense and on top of that there are too many jargons in their dialogues making things even harder to understand because they don't even explain properly or even showing properly what kind of thing that is. For example, a word like wave-worn phenomenon. Right now, I still cannot imagine what is that thing, what does it look like, how it is related with the story, or whatsoever. I have no idea. Also, a lot of dialogues were still missing. This is not just for the side stories, but even for main story as well. Obviously, typos still exist. A lot of characters have wrong skill description. I mean, I'm pretty sure Rover is not a fusion character. And again, dubbing also not exist unless you change the game language to Chinese language. But maybe this is just for English version, right? Maybe other localization is good already, like Japanese for example. Not really, it is basically the same situation as English, I already checked it. So yeah, so far only Chinese did things right. I mean, it is the original language of the game, so it's kinda given. This is honestly also related with the issue that I have with the story before, like the prologue of the story, Literally it throws you a lot of infos, Chinese name, honestly it is one of my concerns as well because there are so many names written with Romanas Chinese, for example like they change Kakarot to Kalkaro and then Jinsi to Jinhasi, like how am I supposed to pronounce their name now? I really hope they put an easier name for people to read because not even characters from Liyue is that hard to pronounce to be honest. Maybe this is because we are still in the first area of the game, I don't know maybe the second area is not about Chinese anymore. We will see about that later, but anyway, with all of this problem at the end, it makes me wonder if they really plan to release the game in 2 months. I know this because I've seen some people were saying that the game is going to release in May, but I will be real with you, judging from all of these issues that we have right now, it is very unlikely. Releasing this year, sure, it might be possible, but releasing in 2 months, I don't know. If they really plan to release in 2 months, the only thing that I can hope for is that this build that we have in second beta, it's probably not their latest build. Maybe they have way more advanced build already, I don't know, because if this is their latest build, I don't even want to imagine what the final version looks like in 2 months. So yeah, that's all about the video. Obviously there are a lot of other things that I didn't cover, like in specific bosses, the lock-on just feels really really bad. Morning X boss fight is just really cancer, and then we have Ling Yang, which is a 3 star character, and we also have Dungeon, which is a 6 star character, and then they need to put claim all button in almost every single menus, and then they also need to put a spawn timer for world bosses, deleting multi echoes, blah blah blah, but I think for me, that is the least important issue because it is relatively easy to fix in my opinion. And for Dungeon, even if they didn't nerf her, then I just need to pull for her later, when the game release very easy but overall i think i've put my biggest concern into this video and i already put the rest into the feedback form don't worry about that guys and as final words i really want this game to succeed but do we need to kill genshin impact honestly no as long as the game gets like top 10 most profitable gacha games i think it's already fine so yeah that's all about the video like and subscribe for upcoming video and i see you guys next time.